Now let's talk about how to take the cross product of two vectors. The cross product is just sort of another way of multiplying vectors together, and it has some useful properties that we can use in, in science and physics and stuff like that. So cross product, um, let's just go through these points quickly here. Uh, it's written A cross B like that with the vector arrows on top. It can only be used with 3D vectors, so you can't actually use it on 2D vectors or 4D vectors or anything like that. Um, and it is a vector, so when you cross two vectors, A and B, for example, together, what you end up with, what the result is, is a third vector that's perpendicular to both of those vectors A and B. So, for example, if you have A and B like this, the third vector that you're going to produce by taking A cross B is a vector that sort of sticks out of both of them like that. The direction of the vector follows the right-hand rule, and we'll talk more about this in a later lesson. The magnitude of that arrow, so the length of that arrow, is actually equivalent to the area of this parallelogram that's made by the two vectors. And lastly, the way we calculate cross product is like this. This video is not going to go into any proof or detail about how we get these, um, these vectors um, or how we get the cross product. We'll save that for another video. This is just about how to take the cross product. So this formula down here to take the cross product looks incredibly complicated. Um, and it is, right? So the, and the thing to notice as well is when we take the cross product of two vectors, we're, gonna, we're going to end up with a vector as the answer because when we do this first part, um, A and B are the two original vectors. Then we have AY times BZ minus AZ times BY. That's going to give us our X component of our new vector. This is going to give us our y component of our new vector, and this is going to give us our z component of our new vector. So it looks pretty complicated, but there are a few different ways to remember how to do that, that cross product. This is the one that I like the best. So going down here to example one, I'm just going to show you. So example one gives you two vectors a and b and asks you to determine the cross product of the two of them. So the, what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to write out those vectors on top of each other. So one and I'm doing this sort of off to the side as rough work and then below it negative 3, 1, 2. So there are our two vectors sort of written components separately on top of each other and then what you have to do is you have to repeat the first two columns. So 1, negative 3, see I'm just repeating this first column here and then 5 and 1, so I'm repeating that second column there. In order to take the cross product this is what you're going to do. You're going to forget about that first column. That first column doesn't matter. And what you're going to do is 5 times 2 minus negative 1 times 5. So once again, you're going to multiply 5 times 2. So I'm just going to write this out below here as A cross B equals. You're going to sort of go diagonally. So for the first component here, it's going to be 5 times 2 times, or sorry, minus, negative 1 times 1. So see, all I did was I went across and then back, subtracting in between. And then, so that's for the x component of that vector. And notice up here, actually, that's what we did. We basically did this part here, where we took the y component and the z component, and we subtracted the, the z component of the a and the y component of the b. Um, so a little bit complicated, but let's just keep going and maybe it'll just click. So then we do the same thing with this second pair. We're going to cross those over. So we do negative 1 times negative 3 minus 1 times 2. And that's the y component. And then lastly, we're going to do the same thing with the z component. So we are going to do 1 times 1 minus 5 times negative 3. And we can, of course, simplify that. So that would be 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1, basically, so that's 11. Then our second one is going to be 3 minus 2, which is just 1. And our last one is going to be 1 minus, oh, this should be a minus 3 here, right? So that comes out to 16. Okay, so there's our new vector, 11, 1, 16. That is the cross product of A and B. So just, again, looking at what this answer means, if we look at the original 
the question. It just said A cross B. So A and B are just two vectors. So going back up to this diagram, A and B are just two vectors. What we produced is a third vector that basically sticks out of both of those vectors. And that's the answer, 11, 1, 16. All right, we'll do a few more. By the way, there's just a note here, a quick note. If you want to check to see if you did your answer right, um, you could always take the dot product, because remember, the dot product is good for checking if two things are perpendicular. And the way this answer should be perpendicular to both A and B. So if we do A dot the answer, it should give us zero. And if we do B dot the answer, it should also give us zero. So that's just a quick way of checking. You could do that yourself. All right. Now, how about this? Example two, determine B cross A for the vectors from example one. So we already did A cross B and we got that vector 11, 1, 16. Is it the same if we switch them around? So think, think about it for a second before calculating it. Even go back to that original, the original equation up here. Think about it. Will it change anything if we do them in the opposite order? Make a prediction. Okay, now let's actually do the question. So I'm going to do the same thing here that I did for example one. I'm going to write out those vectors. Now I'm going to put the put B on top this time. Negative 3, 1, 2. And then I'm going to repeat the first two, basically. And I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom one. 1, 5, negative 1. And then 1 and 5 again. Okay. Now that we have those there, I can just take my cross product. So B cross A is going to equal, again we skip the first column, and we're going to do 1 times negative 1 minus 2 times 5. So 1 times negative 1 minus 2 times 5. Obviously if you're comfortable adding and multiplying these things in your head, you can, uh, you can skip a few steps in here. Uh, 2 times 1 minus two times, uh, negative three times negative one. It just gets a little bit complicated when you have a lot of negatives involved and you have to keep track. And then th negative three times five minus one times one. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna move over here to find the answer. So that first, the x component of our answer comes out to negative 11 the y component of our answer, 2, and then you got a lot of negatives there, so that's going to be negative 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And then our last one comes out 2, that's negative 15 minus 1, negative 16. There we go, that's b cross a. Let's look at both of our answers. What do you see? They're the same numbers, but they're opposites of each other, so um, they're the neg it's the negative answer, essentially. So it's like we multiplied all those components by negative 1. So you see A cross B is not the same as B cross A, but they are related. One is just the negative of the other. And if we go back up here to our original equation, that makes sense, right? Because if we're switching the places of A and B in each one of these equations, it's pretty much like we've just switched these two things here, right? So it's going to end up because you're subtracting there, it's going to end up with the negative answer. Because the order of subtraction matters, right? Just as the order of cross product seems to matter. All right, let's do a few more examples. Oh, and here's our uh, important conclusion, of course. Order matters for cross product, unlike dot product. So the cross of A, dot, uh, A cross B is equal to negative B cross A. Okay, so what I want you to do, I want you to try example three yourself. Pause the video here take the cross product, and then it asks you for the magnitude of the cross product, and you should be able to do that as well. Unpause when you have your answer. So if you did your calculations correctly for the cross product of A and B, you should have got that the answer is 0, 0, 0, the 0 vector. So what does that mean if A cross B is equal to 0? We know when we did A dot B, and that equals 0, that means those two lines are perpendicular. What does it mean if the cross product is 0? So let's think quickly about what the, uh, the magnitude of that vector means, right? Or that, that product means. Remember, I said the magnitude was that area that's created by the parallelogram. Well, if that's zero, doesn't it sort of mean like this B, ver this B arrow is sort of right on top of this A arrow down here? This is a conclusion we'll talk more about in a future lesson. But essentially what this means is that A 
and B are collinear. That means they're the same line or the same vector. They go in the same direction. And the way we can check that as well, if we look at these actual the vectors that we were given, one of them could be a multiple of the other one. So, for example, how do we get from 4 to 6? Well, we know we can multiply by 1.5, and to go from 4 to negative 6, you would just multiply by negative 1.5, right? So to go from this vector to this vector for the x component, you would multiply by negative 1.5. This The same thing actually works out for the y and the z components, right? If you multiply negative 6 by negative 1.5, you get 9, and if you multiply 10 by negative 1.5, you get negative 15. So because a and b are sort of just a multiple of each other, that means they're actually the same line. So if you were to draw them, to sketch them out, it's like if this is a, and then b sort of looks like it's going in the negative direction, so it looks like it would be going like that. They're actually along the same line, which means they're collinear. And a way of checking that, to see if they're collinear, if they're along the same line, is that the dot product of those two things is going to be zero. So that's sort of the conclusion there. If the dot product, or the cross product comes out to zero, those two lines, or those two vectors are collinear. Here we have a more of a challenge thinking problem. So if we're crossing these two vectors together, we're going to get 808 as the result. So obviously we have to do the same process to cross those two vectors. So what I want you to do, I really want you to try this one yourself, um, and then you'll see that there's just a little bit of algebra required to solve the question. So pause it here, and then I'll set it up for you. You can unpause if you get stuck. So here I've taken the cross product of these two vectors. I called them P and Q. I didn't want to use A and B because A is already in the question as a variable. So I took the, the cross product of P and Q with those variables in it and then simplified it. And I got this out as the answer. Negative 7A plus 1 is the X component. Negative 2A minus 2 is the Y component. And 8 is the Z component. Now we know that this thing should be equal to 808. So I can sort of just set that equal to 808. Notice how the Z component, 8 and 8, match up. So that one doesn't really tell us any information, but it does check to see that we've done it right. So it looks like we've taken the cross product right because that comes up to the same number. Now, how could we find this? Well, uh, essentially, negative 7a plus 1 just has to equal 8. So we can write that as an equation. Negative 7a plus 1 equals 8. And obviously, we can bring that one to the other side becomes 7, and then divide by negative 7, so a should equal negative 1, if we do that algebra. We should check to see if the other question gives us this, the other, the second component, the y component gives us the same thing. So negative 2a minus 2 equals 0. Going to bring that to the other side, negative 2a equals 2, a equals negative 1. So both of those confirm our answer, essentially. A little bit of a silly question, because they could have put a second variable in, um, and how to solve for two variables with two equations. But um, either way, that verifies that our answer is right because we both got the same for that, and then that third component was also correct. One more little example down here, or sorry, one more little note here before the end of the lesson. Uh, some properties of cross product. These are essentially the same as the properties of dot product. So you can, um, when you're taking the cross product of two things, or, or I should say, the cross product of something with two other vectors added, you can sort of distribute that cross product to B and C in this case and take those cross products separately. Obviously, taking the cross product twice is more work than just doing it once. So when you can, try to sort of factor out that A and then you can add those and then take the cross product. And same thing here for B. When you have a constant, you can sort of um, distribute that constant in for A and B. Oh, there is a mistake here, actually. This should be a cross B. So when, when you're crossing two things and you have a constant multiply them, you can sort of distribute that constant into either one of them, if you want. You can keep it on in front and take the cross product. You can do it times the A or times the B. All right, there you go.